All right, guys, what's up? I'm Swanky Games. I do apologize that it's been a while. I've been busy a lot. And because of that, a lot of times when I even haven't been busy, I more or less just wanted to be lazy or just play some games off, off camera. I do apologize, but I'm back. I do plan to get back into things. I do apologize about the long, the long absence. What did I want to discuss today? Well, I wanted to take a few minutes to discuss some anti-pressure tools you guys can start using to help throw off your opponent's momentum. This can be extremely crucial because especially if your opponent is starting to get too aggressive, if nothing else, throwing off their momentum can really be key in winning interactions, rounds, or even entire matches. Because a lot of players, they only tend to have one real play style that they have. Everybody has that like one main key play style. So once you shut that play style down, a lot of times more often than not, there's just nothing they can do about it. So it can definitely help mitigate a lot of situations and help you win rounds just knowing that you have other options. And that's what we're going to discuss today is how to deal with those situations. So why am I doing this? A big part of it is because a little bit ago, I was in some ranked matches, and I noticed I was fighting some Horongs even at my rank, uh, and as well as like purple ranks. Uh, I was also training, like coaching a few Horong players. I noticed a couple of them had this bad ha had some bad habits as well. And I'm gonna try to help you guys out with knowing how to deal with pressure a little bit better. Keep in mind that sometimes, especially at first, you're probably going to lose a few because you want to really try to keep this stuff in the back of your mind. But as you get better, you'll be able to determine what you need to do right then and there. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Like, for example, like I said, those Horong players that I was playing in ranked and my students, a lot of them, when they were getting pressured, would just default to back one, which isn't the worst move to use. The problem is, is that if your opponent knows it's coming or if they're not being as aggressive as, aggressive as you thought they would be, for example, for example, when they do that, throw out that back one like so, it can definitely make things difficult. But the problem is, is that if you're going up against somebody like me or other Huang players that know how to deal with that situation, all it takes is getting hit by this once. So you might get that 15 damage, but that's probably all you're going to get. Because once we see it, we're going to know that we're going to stick to these little tiny pokes that are still effective. We're not going to get all up in your face unless we know we can beat it. Like if I do something like this. I know it would beat it. So, and another big thing is too, is that back one has a very, very long recovery time. So if I see it, I can take a while and and launch you for that. So you definitely want to be very careful when just throwing stuff like this out. Like even when, even though you were at plus one, all I had to do was back up. And I potentially get 89 damage, give or take. So that's definitely something to try to keep in mind. But if you guys end up enjoying this or you guys find it useful, consider liking and subscribing. The more that you guys do it, the more it helps me out. The more you guys help me out, the more I'll be able to help you guys and others out. Also, if you guys want to hang out with me or other great Tekken players, or you guys would like some coaching from me or uh, and other Tekken players, Consider joining my Discord. There's lots of friendly faces just waiting to get in some GGs and try to help you guys out. And I would love to hang out with you guys as well. So do not hesitate to stop on by. And I do hope to see you guys there. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So there's going to be five main categories to try to keep in mind while you're trying to learn to deal with pressure. At first... 
This is going to be difficult to try to navigate through, especially when you're trying to deal with pressure. However, and I get it too. Sometimes you want to shut your brain off or you're having a bad day and you just want to play the game. I get that. But if you are practicing these habits along with whatever else you want to get into, you will find yourself on those days, maybe a month or so later, when you want to shut your brain off from a long day or a bad day, you'll find even on kind of autopiloting and just trying to play that you're performing a lot of these tools naturally. And that's the idea. And as you do this, you'll find yourself being able to determine what situations you can beat with what tools and so on and so on. The five main categories are, well, the first one's gonna be movement. This is always number one. Movement is always the thing to try to keep in mind, especially after say like a back one, for example, if you know the opponent might throw that out, even if you don't and you just throw it out, sometimes a move just takes a simple back dash to get out of the way or a simple sidestep. And especially if you're fast enough to be able to catch it, you can make them punt, you can make them pay for throwing that out. Back, I mean, back one has kind of a long recovery. And usually panic tools, even safe panic tools, they usually have a long recovery time. That's kind of the trade-off. So that definitely movement is probably the number one thing. The next thing is going to be your quick pokes. This is typically going to be your one jab, down forward one as a mid. Maybe your down back three as a low. Maybe you think your opponent's going to go for a high, so you throw out a high crush. Or maybe they're going to go for a low, or you think you're gonna, they're going to, so you go for a low crush. Sometimes a quick poke, like down forward two even. If Sometimes people like to play with fake frames. So you throw out a down four two or maybe a back four. Back four is actually a lot more evasive than you might think. So throwing this out, 13 frames. Might be able to get pretty good damage. So uh, the next one's gonna be your grabs. This is very, very important. Especially if you have a character with a homing grab that's not a generic grab, it can really, really help you out. Especially with, if nothing else, even if they do know how to break the throw, it could still throw off their momentum. Because if they're being aggressive, they're not going to be want to be just mashing buttons. Because if they mash the wrong button when you throw out a grab and it connects, they won't be able to break it. So definitely keep that in mind. Also keep power crushes in mind. This is a, a big one. Some of you guys already default to a power crush, but there's just as many minuses as there are to, there are pluses with a lot of these situations. So definitely try to think about this as you're using them because this is another extremely bad habit I notice a lot of Horongs using, but just as much as it's a bad habit, it's still a very good habit to keep in the back of your mind. And then your last main category is going to be your panic tools It's going to be moves like your back one that i also want to get into or uh down back three which is a high crush or up three plus four which is a low crush maybe a move after a sidestep or maybe a move with a sidestep in it like up back two and back one and we're going to dis dissect all of these and discuss a few situations where you might find yourself in a spot and you want to learn to deal with those so all right so the first category was movement movement is arguably the most important tekken concept or feature uh to keep in mind with tekken is a very movement based game with that is 3d we all know this but while we also know it we tend to forget it we tend to forget that sidestepping is a thing. In a lot of situations, like, has anybody seen this string before? Show of hands, anybody seen that string before? Did you know even on hit, you can sidestep 
the last attack. You know that? So, simple movements like that can be the thing that makes the difference between you winning and losing. Especially if you do something like this. My bad. As you can see, I was able to get a pretty good amount of damage because they wanted to throw that option out. So the next time they go to do that sequence, they're probably going to think about how to avoid that situation. So then they might do something like this. Now, because I attacked and didn't actually pay attention to what was going on, I ended up throwing out that back three and then they ended up capitalizing. So what I might do is just do the sidestep and then just don't do anything. You see how even just back holding the back button, I was able to get out of the way of that down forward too. I was able to create that situation with my movement. And more often than not, the answer to your problems are just that simple. It's not easy to remember or think about, but sometimes they really are as simple as a simple sidestep or simply holding the back button can get you out of a lot of situations. The next category, category two, is going to be your quick poke. This is going to be your generic one jab, down forward one, maybe your low poke or your high crush, your low crush, maybe a move that has a sidestep in it. These are going to be your typical quick pokes. Maybe just like a mid poke works or a quick launch or a quick counter hit launch. These are all options in terms of quick poking. Now, why is this important? Well, especially in those sequences like the one we were mentioning earlier with Dragonov. Even on hit, Dragonov's little sequence there doesn't truly exist as like a proper flow chart. Because even on hit, a quick low poke or a quick poke is all you need to interrupt that. But say you didn't even know that much, right? And so they got, went for their sequence. You go for your generic answer, the answer that seems to be working. So they have to change up their game plan. So then they will, they'll, they'll do the same sequence, but they'll change one thing up. And because they changed their timing up and you threw out that same answer, they knew to stop and block they let you do it, and because they know that like that option is punishable, they're gonna go after a a launcher. Now, more often than not, believe it or not, people don't truly react to that kind of stuff. They're just doing what worked. So they're gonna block that back three, and they're gonna go for that down forward two. They were always gonna hit that down forward two, regardless of what they blocked. You know, and that is actually the case a lot more often than you would think. So maybe we just change it up again with another mid poke forward two would be a great option. We ended up blocking it and they ended up not and uh, launching us because we ended up doing something safe. What's more is if they do decide to go for that same option down forward two, although not as punishable, is still punishable, right? So you go for that same option, they'll block it, they'll throw out that down forward two, and then a quick poke, your four three from Horong, ends up being the best answer. It may not get you the same ideal result as that sidestep back three that you did earlier, but that quick poke can be the thing that lets them know, okay, they know what they're doing, that I'm gonna have to change my game plan up even more. So that's where 
having, you know, like I said, that movement and other stuff in your back pocket as well. And those quick pokes are really, really good for shutting down a lot of your opponent's key flow charts or pressure situations, if you will. So the next category or the third category, if you will, is going to be your grabs. Now, earlier I did mention that you're going to want to try to see if you can get a command grab that has homing property in it. Unfortunately, not everybody has both options. You either just have a simple command grab or your homing grabs are only the generic ones. You don't really get a command grab that way. But the reason, even if they can break it, the reason why it can be so crucial is due to the fact that once like they are, they commit themselves to a button, there's just nothing they can do. Whether it be because they did a power crush or if they end up doing a different move altogether. For example, and I'll get into the forward three that I just did in a moment. But I just wanted to point out like, so having that grab in your back pocket is gonna really teach them, hey, don't mash on me. Because the second that they hit a button, if it's not the, the correct break, once they've hit the button, they can't break it. And one, even if they do break it or if they are able to, they're still, it's still, you're still going to force them to slow down because all it takes is for them to hit the wrong button and there's nothing they can do. Like they have to deal with that or this early option like before. You know, they ended up probably hitting the two button for the down four two like before. And look, again, this is the dummy. I can't make them do what I want to make them do. However, because they didn't end up hitting a button, they couldn't break it even if they wanted to. All right, so next is going to be the power crushes. Now, this one I wanted to dissect a little bit more than the other topics because power crushes and panic tools, specific panic tools we'll get into in a moment tends to be a lot of people's main default panic option when it comes to dealing with pressure. This includes power crushes, if it come out, uh, heat engagers, and rage options. Tend to be everybody's like bread and butter go-to options. More often than not, there ends, ends up being m more risk involved than what would be ideal. So for example, dragging off players like to do this down forward one string and they'll usually mix it up with say a mid or a power crush or a low after being blocked just to see if what you're gonna do. And that that's pretty common. I don't know how, if that particular sequence is common, but I've seen it. And so big problem with that is that if I see it, it's usually pretty risky. It's pretty punishable. And the problem is, is that a lot of times you guys will see it. You'll do it, throw a power crush. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But if you only throw it out once every blue moon and you mix it up with other options, then this isn't going to be an option for them all that often. For Maybe sometimes throwing out your own power crush can be what helps keep you in the fight. You also have, as I mentioned before, the grabs, which will all, always break a power crush. So you want to keep kind of things like this in mind, but at the same time, having those options, for example, from say, 
from a sequence like this, for example, can be what kind of keeps you in things. Now, again, I apologize. It's a dummy. I can't make him do like particular sequences as easily as I would like to. But you get the general idea. A power crush can be what, what hurts you. And it can be what saves you in a lot of situations. And I get it. Because a power crush's property, I believe, activates at 8 frames. So something like this is very useful. Especially when like the Dragonov player is using fake frames. For example, let's go with... I think it was this one. <laughs> Excuse me. As you see, a power crush in that situation would be uh, not the greatest choice. However, from the sequence from before, a power crush can get you out of it. So if you're unaware about the sidestepping and you're not sure about how to interrupt, then throwing out this power crush in that situation can be another way for you to get out of those sequences. And this is just me pointing out that even a, a sequence like that, that I'm sure everybody and their mother has seen from Dragunov, there's a, an option to beat it every which way. And Power Crush is, is just as great as an option as any. So the last category I wanted to discuss was going to be your panic tools. This is the creme de la creme, the, the get out of jail free card, if you will, for a lot of situations. And probably the most sought after category. This is probably the most common one that most Tekken players will default to, not just Horong players. But we are unfortunately part of the category that falls into this trap. Now, why is back one such a big deal? If I go after this uh, one option here, the same strategy it, it deals with that as well. If I go after a different, if I go after back one for a different option, it covers that option as well. It's very, very nice. Uh, I, not that one. A, a lot of situ a lot of times, get you out of those situations. Sometimes, it might even interrupt them entirely. Back one covers quite a few options. Get you out of a lot of situations. However, the big problem here is that sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes that's all it takes to shut you down. And then the dragon off to potentially kills you for throwing out back one too many times. All that it all that they had to do was get out of the way and throw out a down forward too. And that's definitely something that I've seen happen to a lot a lot of Horong players. That's something that has happened to me I don't know how many times. And that is something that I have done to other Horong players even more than that. So you definitely have to think about the cons to a move like that. Where more often than not, the best option is just get out of the way of it. And even if it misses... I can launch you for it. If it blocks, I still punish you for it. And this is stuff to try to mitigate as well. But it, they are there. There are other options. For example, say... So say you do your sidestep and uh, option like you wanted to. That don't work. Uh, say you decide to go for a quick grab... This one. That don't work. Try to go for a quick poke. That don't work. Or even if you try to go for a power crush. So 
you have to keep in mind that there are other options. One option that I guarantee nobody has ever thought of that works more than you guys might think. Forward three, going into his flamingo stance. This can actually get you out of a lot of situations. For example, let me think. The very first option, for example. Say you're having issues with that particular sequence. Maybe you tried sidestepping and you keep getting clipped by the attack. Well, a, a great alternative would be forward three. Have any of you guys seen this string by, by chance? Or maybe you've seen this string. Kind of the same one, just a different ender. Well, and m maybe you've gotten clipped trying to sidestep out of the way. Been clipped trying to sidestep out of the way. I get that. So what's cool is that forward three can make doing this a lot easier to get out of. Both options. So it's definitely worth keeping in mind that things like that you can get out of. Or... How many of you guys have seen this little string? Bet you that one's gotten you a few times. But a simple 4-3 gets you out of the way. Without having to worry about like timing on sidestepping as much. There is a situation where if you go if you do it a little too late, it might clip. But for the most part, using that forward three gets you out of that situation. And because of that, I was able to get quite a bit of damage because my opponent decided to default to a string or a series of pressure, if you will. And if you see stuff like that, an option like four and three becomes an option. So it gets you a diff something different other than that back one. And that's gonna be how you guys are going to start implementing panic tools as part of the options that you guys have as well. And that's gonna be pretty much it for anti-pressure tools. Keep in mind, again, like I did mention a couple times earlier, this stuff will be hard to learn to implement into your game plan. But if you're actively learning to try to do this stuff, I promise you it will help you succeed in the future when it comes to learning to deal with pressure. Again, if this did end up helping you guys out or you guys ended up enjoying it, please consider liking and subscribing. The more that you guys do, the more that it does help me out. I do, and I do appreciate each and every one of you guys. Please join me over on my Discord if you guys get a chance. With all that out of the way, I'm Swinky Games again. Thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out. I'll catch you guys in the next stream or video. Take care of yourselves. Happy gaming and, and peace.